welcome to a new episode of Cultural Magazine where we bring you the latest events taking place around the nation. Let's go to collect at today's episode. In continuation of the activities of the National Film Center, headed by scriptwriter Zainab Aziz, the Film Cultural Center is holding a cultural week to revive the Islamic heritage. The activities are held with the participation of the Department of Talented and Intelligent Learning, headed by Dr. Aizadegel Farouk. This comes in activation of the protocol of joint cooperation between the National Cinema Center and the Smart Learning Department of the Ministry of Education. The events include an Arabic calligraphy workshop by plastic artist Mohammed Sayed and a heritage storyteller workshop by Dr. Sausan Radwan. The events also hold a tour of the Authentic Cinema Cultural Library Center and a discussion of the personalities of the directors of Heritage Films in the Department of Film Research. Several Heritage Films are screened during the events, including the film Arabic Decorations by Abdul Qadir Tilmisani, the Sultan Hassan Mosque film by Ashraf Hamid, the film The Kingdom of Hussein by director Ayman Safwat, as well as some others. Within the framework of the arts dialogue activities, El Ghuri Dome for Creativity Center on El Azhar Street, affiliated to the Cultural Development Fund sector, holds a new artistic evening in cooperation with the Dialogue Foundation for the Arts of the People's Cultures. The Tabli Tisit Band will be hosted by the Grand Celebration with the participation of the Nubian Drums Ensemble, the Egyptian Folk Instruments Troupe and the Hasaballah Troupe. The guest of honor is the uh, Dongla troupe for singing and traditional arts. The ceremony comes in preparation for the International Festival of Drums and Heritage Arts. The activity comes under the supervision and direction of the artist Intisar Abdel Fateh. The ceremony also comes within the framework of the Heritage Project in preservation of the Egyptian identity in an artistic dialogue that emphasizes the richness and unique Egyptian character in harmony between the Nubian drum groups and folk instruments. The works are a group of Egyptian songs and mawels from Egyptian folklore. Over the 25 years since its establishment in 1989, the Cultural Development Fund was able to play an effective and influential role in supporting and developing cultural life in Egypt. 
The cultural fund has also been able to build bridges of creative dialogue between intellectuals and artists within each other and between them and the general public. It has also worked to discover young talents in various governorates, supporting them and placing them on the path of excellence and creativity. The scene exhibition presented by Sally Zeni is an extended art project that has not yet been displayed in any private or official hall. The scene was documented and part of it was submitted for academic evaluation at the Faculty of Fine Arts. The exhibit tackles the literature of the 60s and the 20th century and its impact on Egyptian narrative cinema through a contemporary vision of the highest scene in the movie or the masterpiece, which is the influential scene that summarizes the whole film. The project deals with the distinctive features of the literature of the 60s and the impact of the Nasserite experience on the literary movement at that period where socialism imposed its rules on the behavior of society and its organization. This coincides with the official beginning of the cinematic public sector and that was a brilliant period in the history of cinema which was taken from literary works and novels by writers of that period of the 20th century. Sally Zeni added that the project presents visual text parallel to those scenes that are engraved in memory with a special figurative presentation of the highest cinematic scenes and a special analysis of a group of influential scenes in the film. As for the most prominent scenes that she dealt with in her works, she said scenes of a group of the most prominent films of the 60s of the last century were based on the novels of famous writers of the 60s such as Yahya Haqqi's Al Bustagi or the postman Nagib Mahfouz's uh, Cairo 30 or Beginning and End, Ihsan Abdul Quddus's I Don't Sleep, and many, many more. The Cairo Opera House is a beacon of light for artists around the nation. It brings a lot of culture, a lot of heritage, and a lot of amazing artists. Let's go take a look at what the Cairo Opera House has in store for us. The Cairo Opera Orchestra presented a soloist concert on the Grand Theatre, which revived some memories for the classic music lovers with some works by Mozart, Glazinov, Ferre, and Arachinian.
you know that it, it is opera, it is orchestra is wonderful for opera, but uh, with Maestro, the, the artistic director, Maestro Nayar Nagy, we think to try to um, improve the work of this wonderful musician. And uh, I want to tell you that here in Egypt there are a lot of talent, not only singers, but only wonderful musicians that I hope also to see on stage in, in Europe very soon. And for me this concert um, is a wonderful program, very, very difficult program for the orchestra. It was um, three days very intense of rehearsals. But uh, we got it and uh, we hope everything uh, should, I'm sure that everything should be fine this night. Toy toy to this uh, wonderful soloist and uh, wonderful orchestra, of course. They choose the piece. They propose us this piece, uh, of course, uh, of, uh, for their personality, their characteristics, they, their study, of course, before. And uh, I told you, it was very intense training in this week with uh, the orchestra. Uh, they are wonderful, really. It was a big surprise for me. Uh, this kind of talent, kind of musicality, uh, it's very difficult to, to find. In. There is a big, big education here, and um, Egyptian people are very sensitive for the music, not only for uh, opera, even for uh, symphonic. Uh, you have here two orchestras in this in this opera house, the symphonic orchestra and the kind of opera orchestra that they are the uh, outstanding level so you have to improve and uh, I'm sure that uh, since now Egypt is uh, I think uh, with its tradition is uh, one of the most important country for culture in the world The concert presented the soloists Hoda Abdel Aziz with flute, Amira Ali with violin, Mohammed Salah with cello, Mustafa Gamel with trumpet, and conducted by the Italian maestro Elio Orcello. I'm so happy that I'm gonna perform at the Cairo Opera House at the main hall. Actually, I'm gonna perform Mozart Concerto for Flute and Orchestra. Um, it's a masterpiece for flute and I'm happy that I'm gonna perform it. I'm playing flute like when I was um, eight years old and to play with the orchestra, it's kind of a big thing. You have to play it first when you were a child and then you can play it uh, after that at the orchestra. But before that, it's very difficult to play and perform uh, Piece with them because it's kind of um, difficult to play the same thing at the same time together. That's why the conductor is a very important part of any orchestra. And actually, it depends. Sometimes we choose what we play, and um, other times they decide for us what we are gonna play, like the operas and ballets. It's not our decisions, but uh, it's the, the the conductor and the other um, uh, other companies have to do, like uh, the ballets. It has to be arranged with the maestro and the ballet company and the singers. 
For us, it's not kind of uh, choosing what we are gonna play. We have to play what we have, like the Nutcracker, this thing. But for today's concert, it wasn't my decision to play Mozart. It's difficult to choose because all of them are my favorite. <laughs> uh, actually, um, I decided to play Mozart because it's a masterpiece. It's not uh, for flute, actually, but all the composers are masterpieces. So it's, it's difficult to decide what to play. But for me, as a flutist, I have to play Mozart G major, especially with the orchestra, because it's a big experience for me. No, I'm going to perform a concerto uh, called Artunian Concerto by Alexander Artunian. He's an Armenian uh, composer and uh, this is a, a representation of uh, what he did in, in his life. Like um, uh, He's very influenced about the Arabic music and the Armenian music, so you'll hear that. My dream is to be something really great for, for uh, helping others, helping the musicians in Egypt, especially the younger musicians, the many talents in Egypt that has no really opportunity to express themselves, so I'm trying to help them. That's my dream. The Cairo Symphony Orchestra is an orchestra based at the Cairo Opera House and was founded in 1959 by its first music director and conductor Franz Lichauer and its current principal conductor is the great maestro Ahmad Saeed.
Classical music expresses the deepest thoughts of any civilization where composers painted pictures of the society and times in which they lived, not to mention the balance and elegance of this beautiful classical musical genre. Shuruk Bikir, Culture Magazine. Egypt in recent years has started celebrating and awarding different artists in Egypt about their amazing work through the Ministry of Culture. Let's go take a look at these nominees. Under the auspices of the Minister of Culture, Dr. Inas Abdeddaim, the Cairo Opera House, headed by Dr. Magdi Sabir, continues to implement a plan to commemorate the symbols of arts, music, and singing. The Cairo Opera House organizes a major celebration on the occasion of the centenary of the legendary musician, singer, and actor, Munir Murad. احنا النهارده بنحتفل في دار الاوبرا المصريه في المسرح الكبير بمئويه الفنان الكبير الموسيقار منير مراد Today we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the legendary singer Munir Murad. His music was joyful and also beautiful. We first started with his musical performance The Judge of the Beach or Qadil Plage and then the opera troupe performed many of his other songs led by the maestro Mohammed El Mogi. And the choreography of the dances is the Cairo Ballet Troupe with Mamdou Hassan. This comes within the support and supervision of the Cairo Opera House and its director, Dr. Megdi Sober. And we take the chance from here to thank him for his support for this work. He helped us to do something different by making a diverse work of art that includes a musical with ballet. Today we are taking part in the 100th anniversary of the legendary singer Munir Murad. We sang his iconic song, The Judge of the Beach or Qadil Bilej. 
Then we sang several other songs that include Kabel Ghazel and many other distinguished ones. Jihan Morsi is the director of the event and the maestro is Hamad Al Mogi. We all exerted a great effort for the show to come out as it is. <laughs> جاي علشان اتفرج على الحفله النهارده لان بنتي في معهد البالي فبحب يبقى عندها ابديت كل شويه كده بال يعني I came today to watch the show because my daughter is at the ballet academy and most of the dancers are her professors I want her to always be updated to what is happening in the world of ballet she first started by playing gymnastics and then all of a sudden she wanted to turn to ballet First of all, the dancers have to feel the sense of music. Besides, they study playing music and piano. So their sense of music is usually very high. The academy usually tests the musical abilities of the students. Studying ballet needs the child, him or herself, to be interested because it is hazardous and it needs a lot of effort. us to the end of this episode of Cultural Magazine. Hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more on Nile TV.